Okay, welcome back. Now, today's lecture is a very fascinating one. This tutorial is about building build ASP.NET Core from source, you know. So, basically, this idea came from this document, you know, as I've been for some time, I have been uh, delivering tutorials on YouTube for ASP.NET Core web API, ASP.NET Core, Razor applications, and now on securities and identity, following Microsoft articles, you know, documentation and making it on YouTube, okay? But I thought that why not, you know, because uh, I have been harping the fact that it is a cross-platform, it can, it's open source, the source is available for anyone and everyone to have a look and write uh, or even modify uh, so for any improvement that you can carry out if you are very confident. So this is actually today, I devoted the entire morning of today with following this document, which now forms the basis because I encountered a f several um, hiccups, you know, in my process, in the process of um, getting it all untangled. So I thought, why not make a video out of it? So if you look at this um, site, this is basically the site, this site, which, you know, helps you build ASP.NET code from source. And this document, this link forms the basis of today's tutorial. So again, what I intend to do is, you know, it, this is just an overview of ASP.NET Core. So those who are new to ASP.NET Core are just coming in to join our my YouTube channel. It's a, an open source and cross-platform framework for building modern cloud-based internet connected web apps, internet of things, IoT apps and mobile backends. And ASP.NET Core apps run on .NET Core as well they can run on full .NET framework. Now building ASP.NET Core right from the source repository or GitHub because it's all on the GitHub allows us to tweak and customize ASP.NET Core which was not available with the earlier um, .NET framework because it was not open source at all. We didn't have the have any developer outside Microsoft didn't have any access to the source code but you could use the source code to build applications you know as a full stack full stack .NET developer but you didn't have access to the built-in classes methods and many other stuff so it's it lets us to contribute our improvements back to the project and for a look at the known issues and the to track ongoing work you can keep a make a quick visit to this link okay http s colon front slash front slash github.com slash asp.net asp.net slash asp.net core slash labels area infrastructure. Now, these are some prerequisites. Although asp.net core is capable of running on Windows, Mac, OS, Linux, this tutorial will only cover, I have dedicated this tutorial to cover only the Windows operating system because I am exclusively a Windows developer. So bu building asp.net core on Windows requires, on Windows requires these Windows 10, which I, I believe most of you, if not all, would already have ASP.NET um, Windows 10 operating system and at least 10 GB of disk space and a good internet connection because their build scripts download a lot of tools and dependencies. Sorry for, you know, I forgot to change this to Microsoft build scripts, you know, it's not mine. So Visual Studio 2019. So you can download Visual Studio 2019 from this link, https colon front slash front slash visualstudio.com. And you can install the exact required components by this, um, by running uh, this script, you know, install video Visual Studio.ps. And I will show you in a moment how I did it. Okay, so I already have Visual Studio 2019. The, Essential requirement is to run Visual Studio 2019. Now, if you look at, so, you know, let me close this for a second and I will show you in the help, uh, the version. Now, initially I downloaded and installed Microsoft Visual Studio 2019 community version, which is 
available free of cost. And um, how I ended up into a second instance of Visual Studio 2019, which is the Visual Studio Enterprise, is that there's an interesting story, which is once I opened the you know a start window from file start window um, I just cloned I wanted to clone the Microsoft repository which is available at this site um, which is available here at this link HTTP is github.com slash ASP.NET slash ASP.NET Core. This is the entire GitHub repository of ASP.NET Core. So what happened is that, you know, when I put a repository location, that is a remote repository location and a local path and click on clone, it cloned my, um, the project, you know, entire repository and it was available. So let me close this. I've already done it, so I'll not do it again. So it, it, it cloned. So on this Team Explorer window, it had all the solutions. You know, you can see that this repository contains not one, but lots of solutions. Because, you know, um, so once I got all these solutions, I clicked on one of these solutions and tried to build it, but it ended up in a lot of errors. So again, if you go back to the PowerPoint, you know, I will run through it and then tell you so I had to get run this script, you know, install Visual Studio dot PS1 from this site, you know, from the cloned site, you know, which is here uh, in my machine. It is on from GitHub Master. So okay, here. So that is ENG and scripts and here I got this install Visual Studio. So what I did basically is this is PS stands for PowerShell. So what I did was I just brought a instance of PowerShell. I just opened PowerShell. So by default it is a part of the Windows system. So I this is this is how it looks like PowerShell and then I change the directory. I change the directory to this directory, uh, my scripts directory. And after that, what I did was I just clicked, you know, um, install Visual Studio and then, and then click on enter and it all automatically installed the Visual Studio the required components of the required exact components of the Visual Studio. And in my first installation, which was the community edition, it probably wasn't having the exact required components because I didn't follow this um, procedure. I was unaware of this procedure. But, so it created another Visual Studio instance, this time in uh, Visual Studio Enterprise, and it installed all the required components by itself through running this install Visual Studio uh, Power Script. Okay, sorry, PowerShell script. And the next requirement is you should have Git and Git is available. That is the repository. So I already have it so you can get it and you have to have a Node.js. So you need a, a, a version of 10.14.2 or newer from this website and you need Java Development Kit 11 either from this site or the Oracle's either from the Open JDK site or Oracle's JDK site and install a version of JDK that will only be used by this repo. You can run this script similarly what I have shown from for running install Visual Studio for a, opening a PowerShell script and browse it to that directory and you can just drag and drop install JDK after you have created the repository, but that didn't work for me. So I actually downloaded and installed it from OpenJDK, right? And then as I said to you in the beginning, I already had a, 
I had cloned the GitHub repository from this side, so I needed to update, you know. So what I did was to, how did I update it? I have got a git uh, bash, you know, which is available here. It looks like this, git bash, like this. So I got myself, I browsed to that directory, okay, where I needed the update copy of the git. So what I did was here, I've got this. So on this um, um, path from GitHub master, I got this. And if you browse, it, if you have git bash installed already from the git, I mean, um, website, and then if you bring it to the um, place, you know, the directory where the git is already cloned. And if you right click here, you can git bash here. So it will automatically change the directory path and it will sense that you are opening it from this path. So it will come up with this dollar. So there you can write that command. Okay. So you can paste that command, which I showed to you, which was um, this sub module update init recursive. You can just copy and paste and it will do the update for you. Now, after cloning and doing everything, before opening our solution files in Visual Studio or Microsoft solution files, it will be in Visual Studio, you need to perform the following action. Execute the following on command line. So you browse to this directory, the restore.command is a command script. Now I will show you where it is. Yeah, so here it is on the root directory. Here it is the restore. This is Windows command script. So you can open basically a command prompt by right typing command in the search window of the start. And you can just um, browse it. You can change the directory to your clone directory and where you can find this restore command script and you can just after writing it browsing it to that command directory you can write restore and then hit enter and it will restore okay so this will download required tools and build the entire repository once at that point you should be able to open solution files to work on the projects you care about Okay. Now, what happens is that, you know, let me again show you this, you know, I, I came to this stage and uh, once I um, ran that restore script, I could restore, um, I could open, you know, because it has already downloaded after the restoration was complete, it had downloaded the required tools and built out build the entire repository, I was able to open the solution files. Okay. So there is a pro tip, you know, which you can follow if you are a regular user of uh, this repository. Um, you will also want to run this command after pulling large sets of changes. On the master branch, Microsoft regularly updates the versions of .NET Core SDK required to build the repo. You will need to restart Visual Studio every time MS updates the .NET Core SDK. Now use another script is there to open Visual Studio solution files. And this script first sets the required environment variable. So now this again, if you browse to directory that I was showing, so there is a start VS, you know, you can browse to this directory on the command, uh, on the, you know, command prompt, and you can just hit enter and it will to the um, requisite, it will open the Visual Studio solution files because I have already done this process once. So um, it's not of much use to show because it will take a lot of time again to complete. 
once you build it, you know, you will end up with lots of common errors, CS006, 0006. So opening solution files and building may produce an error code CS0006 with a message such as this, you know, error, there's a very common message. So one of the message has been reproduced by Microsoft. The cause of this problem is that the solution you are using does not include the project that produces this DLL. This most often occurs after we have added new projects to the repo but failed to update our solution files to include the new project. So the workaround you can fix this is one of the two ways. So build the project in the command line in most cases running build.cmd on command line solve this problem. And there are there's another method update the solutions to include the missing project you can either do this one by one using .NET solution but that is a voluminous thing so and there is another way you can use this script to automatically traverse the project which it didn't work for me so I took recourse to this one running build.cmd on, on command line so I am build.cmd is here I just wanted to build one solution which is middleware.solution let me tell you because it is a huge lots of solutions are there so I clicked on middleware or you can run say for example identity so identity has got a solution so it has got this build script so if you browse or if you open a windows command prompt and browse to this directory and then run this build um, command script then it will do the requisite it will build the project on the command line okay and then the common error will go so the common it, it built successfully with that instance of command line um, and later on I just did a rebuild and it also worked so I think that's all. Thank you. Hope it helps. Please put up your questions and if you have any comments, please put up your comments on the visual uh, on the YouTube comment section and if you like this video, please um, share it and go for a subscription to the YouTube channel to get regular updates. Thank you.